Because Lord knows I love myself enough. I love myself. You wanted to do this. Okay. This is all you. I love myself every night. I want you to love me. But not with his left hand right now. I want everybody to draw us in the comments. Stop. Names. Show what you think we look like. What do you think we look like? I want to see your fucking best. This podcast has completely gone off the rails now. I would like to see that too, but I'm not fucking... John's then I'll up. like and comment and subscribe. John's losing it. Draws as the character. John has literally lost Nate's it. Nate's not coming back. <laughs> <laughs>Everybody and welcome to Skill Flea Circus, the home of the Scare Your Friends podcast. It has been a very long time, but in the words of Dylan, we are back. We are back We're indeed. Back. And I am joined by my friends Nate, Dylan, and Dan. What's going on, everybody? It's been such a long time. It's been a long time. We're back. Did you miss us? No, you probably didn't. You probably thought we were dead. Jokes on you. We've been dead on the inside the whole time. And it wasn't us that was dead, it was John's laptop. But now we're back. There's been other reasons why I haven't been here, but I will probably make another video explaining that. But there that's not go. for that. Um, so I'm not really sure what to do with this. <laughs> Those flabbergasted. I've never been dead, you fuck. <laughs> yeah, you've just refused to be on certain episodes. Dead on the inside, dead on the inside. Like the failed recording. Um, I, I mean, you. Let's, let's I will only be on. on let's the not go back cave. to that. <laughs> I'll only be on the caver. You will only be on the caver podcast. Caver. Caver. Oh no! Yeah, no, no. <laughs> it doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Right. No. No. So oh, what's no. going on? Let's let's go with Dylan last because we know it's new with Dylan. But let's go with Nate first. Nate, what's going on, buddy? I don't know. <laughs> it's been six months, you motherfucker. Nothing's changed. <laughs> I don't. Well, uh, Six with, months. Half a goddamn year. Yeah, I think so. You've, yeah, you've been with Laura. Yeah, because yeah. right. okay. yeah, last week we were like, oh, Nate probably won't show up. He's like, I'm here! My goddamn oh, girlfriend. that's right, that's yeah. right. No, nothing's new, honestly. It's just, I've been the same old. Um, oh, my God. What? <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, yeah, it actually has Dan, um, what's about. new with you? So, when you, uh, when you told us that you wanted to do one today after all this time, I knew you were going to ask this question. Right? Okay. And I spent a lot of time thinking you about pussy. it. pussy. And I realized that I have no fucking life. Because I got nothing for you, John. <laughs> I got me. nothing for Just, you. That's me. That's I me. work. I, I'm starting. I'm going a little higher up in my job right now. Uh, we're working well, class heroes. No, we, uh, yeah, we are. We can, uh, we can talk about New Year's. We can talk about that. was a good time. New Year's oh, was shit. New Year's was a good time. Oh, yeah. We all, we all hung out at, the, at Dylan and Nate's house. <laughs> I'm looking at John like because I know... It wasn't nearly as good as my first day. <laughs> your twenty first. No, no, because that was that's so well, I wasn't. Sure. I'm not gonna bring yeah, anything up. Though. I'm not either. <laughs> I don't remember what you're talking. I, I about. I know exactly what they're talking about. <laughs> Nate knows. You yeah. know. Someone I was disappointed. You fuck. But yeah. let's go to Dylan, who but has she, some who news. Not be named. So Dylan's yeah. entire arm is completely taped up. Um, Thanks. Let's We're talk about We're chopping you Dylan. up. Starting with the arm. Chop, <laughs> not chopping me up at all. I don't like you. Shut the fuck up. Wow. <laughs> Good to bastard. see nothing has changed. Dylan, what do you want to say to everybody after six months? After, as you're drinking your water. Uh, after six months, I mean... Been Go on, fuck yourself. I, I got my first press pass at Yankee Stadium. Ah, uh, yes. Yay. Yeah. Uh, Nate, what, what? We went to Vancouver. What? Yeah, you did. We, oh, fuck me. Fairly yeah, recently. Yeah. Fairly yeah. recently. Yeah, we went to Vancouver. Yeah, we went to Vancouver. I went, I've been on the radio also for yeah. doing that. Yeah. Sports radio. Sorry, what did you go to a press pass for? To a uh, uh, soccer game, ML MLS Major League Soccer. Why which... did you get a press pass? Because Something. I'm a journalism major. There you go. So, yeah, it's all good. So when Dylan uh, becomes a major, like ESPN journalist or some kind of sports journalist, ESPN, ESPN blows. Whatever. <laughs> wow. And the so bridge. that's on record now. <laughs> the bridge um, has been burned. Right. Look out for those See, comments. Exactly. <laughs> Look out for those comments. Before, had, <laughs> before it has been even built, he has burnt it. So when Dylan becomes a professional sports journalist on the TV, somebody can find this podcast specifically this moment and blackmail him. <laughs> right, so there exactly. you go. Oh, thanks, guys. So, I was gonna... Okay, so, and obviously, in a later episode, William will be here, and he'll be able to talk, eh, hopefully. Eh. When was the last time we recorded? Was it back It in... was six months ago. 
Who are the cousins? You did, want um, back? Yes. Oh yeah, because she who must not be named was next to me. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> We're both calling our girl, our ex girlfriends Voldemort now. Is that what's happening? No, I said she who must not be. That's Voldemort. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Like okay. We are gonna make. So I'm not sure if I want to make this the official start of what I'm gonna call season two of Scare Your Friends. Ooh. I thought but we're like season one. We're gonna do. <laughs> You wanted to do this. John's giving us the middle finger. For I'll come back, John. John's giving us the middle finger. I love how see. I let my friends talk, and then I try to talk for ten seconds. <laughs> now and you, immediately. Now you know how I feel whenever you do, we yeah, do this. Yeah, let's just real life, because no one wants to hear you, Dylan. Wow. Oh, oh, I'm kidding. Oh, oh, also, oh, you, have some, you have some news. Uh, oh. You played D&D for the first time today. Oh, I did, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Very exciting. I played as one of the NPCs. Um, I played oh. as a... Uh, it was an NPC. Yeah. It was a female archer. Half Wood elf ranger. Right. That's De- fine. Her name was De La Chen. Yes, true. It was awkward because everyone was laughing at me because they didn't know her backstory or anything about her, and so they were kind of acting like she had amnesia. But I, I didn't not, know anything. I was not I was laughing at you. But I'll say this. I was laughing with what you. What I will say is this: <laughs> if you have an interest in D and D and you have dragons. the means to at least try it, I say try it. Thanks, John. I th- I will Southern say soul. that I think it was definitely worth trying, and it was a good experience for me. So he doesn't want to do it anymore, and now we're going to get mad at him and disown him. What? No, <laughs> I joking. literally... Okay. So, what I want to do is I want to put a little bit more structure into the beginning of these podcasts. Mm-hmm. So, in the future, what I'm going to do is have a different segment. I guess feedback is the best term for it. Um, why are we punching each other? He's this just seemed Dan just punched Dylan! Right in the back. Yeah. No, what I want to do is, I want to, one of the things I love about, um, about YouTube and any other platforms that we may post on in the future is, I like it, um, when people leave comments. Yeah. And I feel so like, nice. with all the views That's we- That's Nate's favorite, I too. feel like oh. the views are, on Scary Friends have always been really great. I think for our subscriber base, having the views that we have is really good. Especially no, for absolutely. our YouTube-only podcast at this point. For those of you who Hopefully comment, that will change you. soon. Yeah. And for those of you who have stuck around, yes, thank you. For those of you who um, like, but, comment, subscribe, God, thank you. Jesus <laughs> okay. Look. I want you guys to leave comments on this video. And we will read them on the next episode. And you can be a part of it in your own unique way. So that's all I want to say. And while we are going over the comments, we could talk about the things we liked about the story upon reflection before we go on to the next one. So this is going to give us a little bit more structure in the beginning because oftentimes we kind of just scramble and kind of, I don't know, it leads to some comedy sometimes, but I don't know. I kind of want to put a little more structure in the beginning of these episodes. I don't know, I don't know John. I don't, I, don't, I don't like this new formatting. I think I'm probably not going to do the podcast. Anymore. I will unsubscribe right now. All like, right, guys. Um, um, so this is, I'll so uh, see you in six really months. Um, I got to find a new damn... <laughs> I am your only subscriber, and I am unsubscribing. <laughs> Dear Skillfully, um, I really am disappointed by the, your new decision no, to I include mean... the audience in your podcast. <laughs> I mean, I have to unsubscribe. Also, what is... fuck yourself. What is this clickbait bullshit? All right, Dylan, you kept raising your hand, so what did you have I was to say? Like, did you really want me to actually comment on this? That's I was talking about people the who are on the fucking show. No, 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 no. Dylan, I, I, I'm not going to read your comments no, in front of you. No, that's not what I meant. Is that what you want? That? No, oh commenting God. on the comments, not commenting on the damn video. Dylan, if you want to comment on the com- on the video, that's fine. That's not what I meant. What are you asking? You really want me to comment on the comments? Sure. Okay. Yeah, comment, you know what? Respond. Now that Dylan mentions it, this is he should probably sit this segment out. <laughs> All right, Dylan, you don't have to come. You don't have to, you know, write anything for him. Like we'll read some of. No, them. he's just saying because he I'll says pick, like, things. Sometimes I don't know how many I'll read. I might read like two, three, or even five. I don't know. Yeah. It depends on how many we get. I mean, read I don't all. know. I don't know if I'll read all. I mean, we only get like two. Or I three can't promise I'll read. All. I don't want. To, I don't want the opening segment to be twenty minutes. I still want this to be, you know... Speaking of 20 minutes, let's get into the story, John. (laughs) Well, the story is short today on purpose. This is a special episode because we're coming back. So instead of talking about the last podcast we did, Mm -hmm. I want to go over some of the past stories we've done. Yes. And let's say outside of Pen Pal and Abandoned by Disney, Mm -hmm. which I think are the best two stories we've read so far, Mm. I think that's a fair assessment, right? Yeah. I think those are the best two. Yeah. I want to know what you guys thought were... In terms, not just story, but I'm curious as to figure out what, in terms of your experience reading it on the podcast, even if it was just something funny that happened, like you could even say Jeff the Killer, honestly, 
But in terms of stories that you both liked and had a good experience, I want both. So like top five or like top three? Well, try like try thinking like your top two or three. Right okay. Now. So Dan, why don't you start with one that you okay. like? Um, okay. Okay. Uh, top. And maybe top... why you liked the story. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So like top three. Um... Dylan's pulling up the fucking the YouTube channel list because he's like, and I'm thinking the same thing in my head, and I look over and I go, "Of course he is." Um, you no, fucking ass. I would say uh, he doesn't months. remember. It's been six yeah, months. He remember. Yeah, I they don't. Eye. No, I've been doing things. I'm an they idiot. Don't, they don't go back and listen to them like I do because, according to everyone else, I'm a raging narcissist. Yeah, you narcissist. Um, I would say I would say probably number one. And when I tell people that we're when I tell people that we're on a podcast that I know in real life that I'm comfortable, how about this? People. Go over your favorite one and then maybe just some honorable mentions. Well, no, okay. So my favorite, my favorite one, like I said, this is the one that I recommend to people, um, is Smiling Man. Right. Yeah, that's fair. I okay. think I you think... guys freaked out. That was the first time I've ever like really scared my friends. On yeah, that one was a loser. I yeah. think I think that I think we had a really good discussion about that story. I think we were really excited to read that story. And I think the story was really fucking good because it was very simple and it was equally, it was as creepy as it was simple, right? And it's it's very well written. Um, I believe it was Blue Title that wrote that. Um, just a really good job. And it was obviously, she said, you know, she's on been on record to say that it was based on true events. Um, and you have those other layers, like we kind of brushed on, like, you know, her being a woman, her potentially being assaulted by this creepy fucking dude. Um, I think that is probably the, the the most simple and strongest story we've read. I think the second one um, that I really loved, and I for a different reason, I love this one because the story was really open to interpretation, and we had a lot of fun interpreting it. As the next one we did, uh, uh, Wide Mouth. Um, only when you know, like like I just said, we all had our own interpretations. We had a lot of fun interpreting that. Um, and it was a good story. It was an open-ended enough story. And I think my third favorite is Jeff the Killer, for obvious reasons. Because it's so fucking bad. It's so bad. And I love bad shit as almost as much as I love great if shit. If you were going to go with that, you should have just gone with the house that Death forgot. No. Well, no. Because the house that Death forgot, and we talked about this on that one, there was, poten yeah, there was potential in the house that Death forgot. There's fragments of that story that I like. Jeff the Killer is fucking abysmal all the way through. Jeff the Killer is the room of creepypasta, right? There's shit in the house that Death forgot that's not bad. Melinda's a fucking idiot. The main character's a moron. Oh, yeah, the Melinda's So family. much so that we created our own <laughs> judging system. But there was potential in that story. There's pieces of that story that I like. Jeff the Killer is just fucking awful. Right. Awful. Okay. How about Dylan? What, what do you think? Uh, I remember one. Just... I'll pull up one that I remember you said you liked a lot was String Theory. Mm. God. Mm. You, you okay, my, say you it. My mind. Yeah. You can about String Theory it. was like one of my favorites cut just because of the thought of being controlled. You know, that gets in your head like, oh, is everything we're doing being controlled by this one, by something greater, or are we controlling our own destiny? Do we have str like, do we have the strings on our back, or is it free will? Free will, not free will. That, that's what's... I really like that one. Uh, second favorite... I'm not... See, I'm not as in-depth as Dan is, because Dan actually knows... He has a knows fucking shit. degree in reading, so, you know. Yeah. I should know, but, you know, I don't know. So, you know. It's fine. Y you know. Um, the second one, there was... Uh, I believe it was the one where it was um, autopilot. It was... Yes, autopilot. Yes. Autopilot was one where... You like the science fiction ones. This, yeah. this sort of cerebral. I guess that's why I like my science fiction class. Yeah, yeah. Because like, you leaving, you know, doing everything, you know, you just you thought you did everything, and then forget the protagonist forgets his daughter in the car. Your fucking brain exploded. And, yeah. at that point. Oh, autopilot. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, I didn't know autopilot. autopilot. That's a good one. David yeah. King, read autopilot on UCA. Jesus Christ. <laughs> David King, I don't know who you are, but it's the guy from UCA. He leads you oh. We've read one of his stories, even. It was the oh. uh, the Grand Night in the Haunted Mansion. That was a good one. That was a good yes, one. Yes, read it, because it's really good. It's pretty good. That story's good, dude. <laughs> As I'm uh, Nate, what do you think? Like... Um, you weren't here for a lot of the later ones, but... Uh, Tubes, you being in a band and getting a You girlfriend. asking him is probably asking, like, a freaking... All right. Okay. Everybody else Dylan. got a turn. Dylan, let same. him have his you turn. You cunt. Oh, yeah, Woo! I smoke too much weed. I don't remember. <laughs> um... 
You must I, remember at least a, you must I have know, some experience. I have, you have never even held a joint. Don't lie to these people. <laughs> since we're only doing two, I literally only have two. You can do three. Um, I remember no, one that I you three. remember was um. I remember. I don't know. I don't know if it was one of the two. I remember Smile Dog. You were pretty Smile active. Dog? One. Also with um and Nancy's. Just... Here's one that no one's really mentioned was a Nancy's Goat Man. The Goat Man one is great because oh, yeah. of William. Because yeah. William's a fucking asshole. I love that one because of him. And that's yeah. on record, too. To answer your question, the, the small dog one was the one with the floppy disk with the fucking image of the dog on and you go crazy. And you mm. see it. Oh, yeah, that was good. It's a relatively fresh pasta. I was trying to remember it, but uh, the main one Any I was... Uh, yeah. The main one I was actually... Uh, was The first one, I'm surprised Dan, you said this was uh, Smiling Man. That was... Uh, he said it. It was simple. Um, it was... Mm. It, it In a sense, when you think about it, uh, it kind of feels like just a typical horror uh spooky you know story but it's done very in like a modern feel and done very well um it's almost it's bordering on like urban legend a little bit and there's no like supernatural shit in it it's just this one moment in time in this person's life and i think um for me i've said this a dozen times in the past um uh, things things from a distance freak the fucking shit out of me mm. um no matter what and just i can easily the story just get, get put the image in my head of what this thing was underneath the lamp human fucking creature who knows um and then the fact that said we don't know if it's a male or woman uh and it, it could be a true story or not um which i mean it's a general story it seems like to me um but my second one i would say um uh, normal porn for normal people. Not the original. Yeah. The OG. Um, first story read, and it just, I don't know, it just, I just liked the, the, nothing, it all caught me every single, like, segment, and the fact, the thing I really loved about it was the segments. They had a bunch of, like, creepy things, and it just really brought me into the whole, it was a great starter for the whole, uh, creepypasta thing for me. The way that, story is structured um and it's it's done it's written well too Mm -hmm. but i agree with you in the sense like there are different types of horror in that and it works in that format of just being scary videos with this sort of overarching loose narrative about you know somebody discovering these videos on the internet Mm -hmm. but i agree it's almost like little snippets of like anthologies of different types of horror and it works in that in that sense because it's the internet because we don't know. Right. Well, I realize why it's very bad to go last because I'm trying to be <laughs> and try to think of something on the fly. Uh, what did I remember that we all like that hasn't been mentioned? I like the cave. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, the cave is my favorite fucking story. What cave? Okay. Yeah, exactly. Podcast. Um, was it the, maybe. Um, I think one that I liked that no one else liked was the showers. I think. <laughs> Showers, I think I had a lot of fun with. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to think of one that I like. Really the one with mention. the room 733 or whatever it was. Yeah, that one too. was good too. That one was pretty 1738? solid. 1738? No, whatever, 733 or whatever it was. 733 was good. The one yeah, about the, 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 the haunted room. room, the suicide room. The suicide room. room. In the college with the two girls? Yeah. I was like, hey, what's up, hello? By the way, I'm not trying to promote these for our podcast. I'm literally saying, like, all these stories were really good. You should, no, you should read some of these. And also, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe a little bit. But oh, honestly, Jonathan. read some of these stories. All these not stories are really like, good. Comment, and subscribe. You shouldn't read them. You should just listen to our podcast. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> No, I mean, we haven't fun. done this in a while, so I figured it would be cool to do this. No, I, I, yeah, I, I've I, kind of wanted to do this for a while, so this is cool. Like uh, me! <laughs> I think one that is always forgotten, but one of my favorites, and will always be one of my favorites, will be um, Lost Episodes by Slime Beast. That one's very yes, good, too. Yes, Slime Beast. Only that because that was the too. first time I ever really spoke to Beth about doing artwork for the podcast, and she's done a phenomenal job. She's fantastic. Right. We are very lucky to have her. Right, yeah, she's done great work. Um, so yeah, I think that's um, yeah, I think that's definitely <clears throat> one that I remember quite uh, dearly. Yeah, yeah, now that you mentioned, I completely for whatever reason, and that story actually is very memorable, but I just forgot. Um, yeah. That one's really solid too. Absolutely, it's actually a sequel to that one, but I'm gonna forget. What? It. Yeah, it's called. Um, what's it called? Shit, what's the name of the name? Squidward Lifts. Like Killer Two. Squidward Lifts. <laughs> Squidward Lifts. Squidward, Squidward. I love, I love that Slime Beast doesn't do like 
Abandoned by Disney 2 or Lost Episodes 2. It's always oh, some uh, other title. I have a boy, one well, love. Yeah. Abandoned by Disney. Um, I don't know. Uh, what the hell is his name? I, it's killing me now. I think it might have been. It's like. It's two different companies, Dylan. Know. I know there's a sequel to well, it. Well, I tried. Maybe we'll get to it. Um, but yeah, you know what? Let's. Let's forget the past for a bit. Let's um Look let's start future. with the new. So here Look we go. To the so here's the first story Look we've read in a very long time. Future. What uh how many episodes? What are we on? Thirty six now? This, this is number thirty six technically. Although this may be just season Woo! two or one. Welcome to twenty eighteen. <laughs> but here it is. This is the thing that stalks the fields. Um oh, shit. in all of the things we've read, yeah. have we ever in can you make a story that's realistic that has a real monster in it? The the goat man story I would say would be the closest thing to that. That one too. Yeah. I also thought funny Baba mouth. Yeager. I thought funny mouth a little bit. Funny yeah. mouth, yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Smiling man. Well smiling man was more of a dude. I meant like well, a beast. I meant like a mythical uh, creature. Yeah. Yeah, but we don't really know what funny mouth is though. That's true. But I and bring it up tangible. I bring it up because I find it can be very difficult to create a creature. Yeah, in a story, and yeah. especially in a short story, because this is a very short story that we're mm-hmm. reading today, and that's why I took the time to talk. That's why we're clients. amping it up. Yeah, well, that's just that. <laughs> I wanted, to do, I wanted to do this. I like really short. Um, stories. but this is a short story, and yes, this is the thing that stalks the fields. This isn't gonna be a thing. I'll spoil this. It's not gonna be a thing of someone's imagination. This is gonna be a real monster. Okay. So this is gonna be a story about a monster. The spoiled it. The, the, the no, Baba Yaga. I already said the that. Baba Yaga. But I want. It's John Wick. But I think that it's really it's hard to make a realistic <laughs> horror story with a monster in such a short space. Like even like Could all of the Eldritch horror stories. It's not a short story, dude. Those are long. Those are very. very yeah, the long. Lovecraft stories. Well, uh, his earlier stuff is pretty. Like if you read Dagon. Okay. That's pretty fucking short. I haven't read any of his stuff. So that's, I'm not sure. that's I know it's just long. So yeah, no, I agree with you. In some aspects I agree. If you're going to create a creature, either it has to be incredibly ambiguous, which happens in Lovecraft sometimes, or even modern short stories where you only catch a glimpse of it mm-hmm. and then it's gone. Um or you see it once and then and that experience and that's it. Um you can't really get into details, but I think you're right. You're right in a lot of sense with, <laughs> with Lovecraft's later stuff. It takes forever to get to not forever, but they're long stories because there's a lot to digest. But like his his oldest stuff, which is coming up actually on a hundred years now, about um like Dagon is only like ten pages, and that's a Dagon? sailor encountering a fish god and then freaking out and leaving, and that, it's pretty short. But I would agree with you in most aspects. Like, creating a monster and having it terrorize people is usually, in a short story, it doesn't really work. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, what about, uh, any thoughts on, uh, I know, because Dan has read a lot of Lovecraft, so I knew... I've read it. all of Lovecraft. That's a I've lot I've literally read, do you, I have the book it's right there. There's a reason he loves blood. It's blood. right there. John, you literally just insulted him by saying one word wrong, and... No, I have literally, that is the insulted. complete works right there. But what do you two think, uh, Dylan and Nate, um, about, like, past, sorry... I do, I don't know anything, so I'm just gonna pass. You don't have to know anything. You don't have to about, know. It's just what you think. We're not talking yeah, I, about Lovecraft. No, I, I know, but like when it comes to this subject, I'm not, you know, very well. You can no. offer Dylan, you an can opinion. Go, you can offer an opinion based mm-hmm. on what you've read in the past. Right. Nate, go. First. Okay. What, what was it? Because I got lost with Dan was saying. What was, what was you saying? What was the? What was I saying? Yeah. Okay, so I was talking about how it's hard to write a horror story with a real creature, like especially in a, a monster. Not. Not, it's not hard, but I would say that it's very difficult to do if you're only going with a very short story. This right. is not even going to be like... This is less than a thousand words, I think. Maybe even... Or maybe a little bit more? I'm not sure. It's definitely... It's, it's short. This is going to be a short story. How do you build the tension up in that? That's the thing. Well, that, like I said, it's got to yeah. be like... It has to be literally probably like one encounter. Right. And, and something like, very unknown. Something fucked up really happens. And you're like, I don't know. I don't even know what I saw. Like... Like Lovecraft, the right? Power of the unknown. It's it's one it's one interaction, and then either the person runs or goes fucking crazy. Because automatically, I'm thinking of a scene in Jaws where they're you know they have they're out on the night boat, and the, the ship rocks. Oh no, that was in Deep Blue Sea. Sorry, that was the beginning. Deep Blue Sea. It was in the beginning of Deep Blue Sea where they're the kids are on the boat, and all of a sudden the boat starts rocking, and like what what was that? And they're they freak out, and then, you know, the shark pops out and freak- scares them. 
That's really all I can yeah, really see right. is like because it's like a scene, mostly, mostly. But like that's the farthest I can go with that because of the tension build don't up. Gi- don't give it too much like screen time, and it'll be even creepier. Yeah. Yeah, like that you said, fear of unknown. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, so I, re- I, uh, I retract my original statement. Dagon is only five pages long. <laughs> okay. Um, but even well, it, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, so. I mean, first of all, this is a new record for Scarier Friends in terms of longest time to start Jesus a story. Christ, we are at the 26 minute mark. Woo! So, but this let's, won't take long. Let's get this well, bitch going. I'm no, definitely going to put. I'm definitely going to put a disclaimer at the beginning of this. Of the beginning of this. No, no, I don't put anything. Make them listen to us. They haven't heard our dulcet tones in six months, John. Love me. Yes. Make sure you like. Because Lord knows I love myself enough. I love myself. But you wanted night. to do this. Uh, okay. I this love, is all you. I love myself every night. I he want you to him, love me. But not with his left hand, right? I now. want everybody to draw us in the comments. <laughs> Stop <laughs> names. Tell Jesus. what you think we look. What do you like? think we look like? <laughs> I want to see your fucking best. <laughs> This podcast has completely gone off the rails now. I would like to see that too, but I'm not fucking... John's then I'll not. like and comment and subscribe. John's losing it. Charles is the character. John has literally lost Nate's it. Nate's not coming back. <laughs> I've done Dude, my job. 2018, the year Nate leaves the podcast. Officially. Oh, shit. Nothing's changed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who want... Who, how do, you, do you want me to start it off? Start? Are, I'll start doing? off. So this is, oh, fuck. so how, the mystery, the, the theme of today, how do you write a realistic horror story with a real monster with only a few paragraphs? I feel like the real Let's theme, see. I feel like the real orange, theme. Orange, spray like, tan orange. I feel like, like alright, alright, I feel like the real theme of today is John thinking to himself, why the fuck did I decide to do this? That's, that's your creepy, that's how you make Bill tension in short story. <laughs> this is John's personal hell. This is the thing that talks the fields. It was a few weeks ago that the hell bells started creepily, you want started to try creeping that again? slowly away from the house. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Six months. <laughs> I'm rusty. Every morning when I woke up, each hen moved a few hundred feet from where it was before. Jesus. I assumed it was pranksters with nothing better to do, so I ignored it. Within a few days, though, the bells began to approach the boundaries of the farm. I was tired of the whole game by then and decided to move them back. It took a tedious hour to bring them all to where they were, to over near the house again. And by the time I was done, I was ready to snap the neck of whatever little piss ant was deciding to screw with me. The next morning, I found each and every one of my horses messily de- decapitated. Fuck, alright. The smell was what woke me up. Each one was slumped over against the side of its stall. There was no signs of the heads. I spent the rest of the day cleaning up the mess and burying the remains. It was only when I was done that I noticed the bales of hay had returned to their original positions from the day before, scattered far out into the fields. This time, I left them where they were. I'm probably going to do. So I'm going to quickly make a quick stop here and talk about how aggressive this writer is yeah, to just that, that immediately great. Real quick. this writer does yeah. not waste your time yeah. this is a very short just story third yeah. paragraph in the horses are missing their fucking heads yeah. and something's moving the hay bales yep. and we don't know what the fuck it is that was yep. a pretty quick ending so I think this yeah. is oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> a quick ending um, but yeah this is yeah uh, again this is I think part of what you have to do if you're gonna make a really short story right you know you, you gotta, gotta get out the quick. bullshit right <laughs> Can't put too much fluff. All right, Dan, why don't you start? The night that night, I sat on my porch with my shotgun in hand and a pot. Did he? This guy should have called the police. And a pot of coffee on the table beside me. I sat for hours, straining my eyes into the fields to catch a glimpse of who was moving my hay bales. Finally, I was beginning to nod off. I would have, but just as my eyes began to close, I heard a clamor and rustle of tree rustling of trees from the nearby woods. I leaned forward, my heart racing with excitement. I was going to catch the bastard. I fumbled with my gun and fidgeted in my seat, waiting anxiously for whoever it was to get close enough to ambush. It was only when the thing got close enough for me to make out its silhouette in the dark that I was frozen still. The thing that creeped into my fields from the nearby woods didn't seem to notice me sitting there. It stalked, haunched and deliberate, through the field with the posture of a tiptoeing thief. If not for the fact that it must have towered to over ten feet tall, even in its crouched positions, it might have seemed almost frail. 
The thinness of its arms and legs and the emaciated, caved-in quality of its chest reminded me of a starving animal. Still, this thing was undeniably strong, and I watched it hoist each bale up in its arms and with ease and set it down carefully a while away, taking only a few strides to cover the distance. I watched it work, moving each bale thoughtfully. Every once in a while, it would straighten up to look around at the other bales' positions in the field before adjusting the one it was working on ever so slightly. Fuck. All right, we're why, in. Okay, why do I... We're in it. Okay, uh, this may be a... a, a sh this is like a shot in the dark, mm. but is anyone thinking about, like, Wendigos? Or not, am I, is that just me? Mm, you, well, based on your experience, yes. You know who I'm thinking of. The fucking Osiris, the king from Dark Souls. Dark Souls 3. The fucking the, the one where it's like where's my baby and it's blind oh, the like yeah. weasel looking thing that's what I'm thinking of right now that. yeah um but you're not off with Wendigos the Wendigos right. just weren't ten feet tall they're very they're lengthy, lengthy. They're, they're, they're lengthy. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. they were a little and strong was what's been described here right right and but when the heat when the he said that, he said that horses heads were to messily decapitated yeah, that's, that's where I was like but here's but here's yeah. something to think about if you're listening at home and you're following along with us here you have a creature that's really big. Right. And clearly powerful. And clearly someone who's going to outpower this farmer. Right. So, if this creature can do this, and the creature clearly has the, the capabilities of decapitating all of the horses, and clearly doesn't have any problem getting close to the house, right. why isn't he killing the farmer? Right. It's so, weird. It's weird that this also, thing is literally just picking up the hay I also want and everyone to them. take notes how it's... How it's describing it, not just throwing the hay bales randomly, it seems it's to be... It's meticulously, right. It's doing something to Right, him. which is weird. But he's not going for the farmer, he's doing something That's the, the creepy fact. Right, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it's consciously making choices on where to put... Because he even says, in the last paragraph, he goes, he puts a couple down, and then he puts one there, and then he looks back at the other ones, and then moves the one he's holding. And it's like, that's fucking weird. And the second that the farmer moved them, the thing fucking killed all of the animals. So it's like, okay, I'm in. He's like, bitch, I'm already freaking out. I'm in, right. He's, he's basically saying, bitch, you move it again, yeah. more are going to die. But then, but then if this thing could overpower him, why didn't he just tear the fucking house down and kill right. the farmer? That's what John's saying. I'm getting inner chills. Because maybe yeah. he can't see him. Oh, uh, maybe. It's the unknown? Maybe. We're about to find out. Dylan? Before it left, it looked towards the house. I felt its eyes sweep over me in the dark, but whether it saw me or not, I couldn't tell. Then it turned silently and crept back the way it came, disappearing into the dark of the woods. It took me an hour before I had the courage to move at all. I went inside after a while, but didn't sleep that night. It was only when the sun rose that I dared step off my porch into the fields. The hay bales were where it left them. Strangely, it didn't move them as far as it had in the previous days. They were approaching something invisible in the fields, and as I looked at them, I realized that they seemed to be marking some line. Indeed, as I walked around the, around the house, I saw the distinct circle that they formed with me at the center. At first, I thought the bales were just being haphazardly moved away from the house, but now I could see that they were instead being moved towards some boundary. The thing was sending me a message. I slept uneasily that night and only because I was exhausted. The next morning, the bales hadn't moved at all. They didn't move at all for the rest of the week. In fact, they were finally where they, the thing wanted them. I made myself sick trying to interpret them. Why would this thing ex expend so much energy moving my hay bales and threaten me with such violence? Should I interfere? Uh, should I try to interfere? Killing my horses was just that, was just that a threat. An intelligent threat at that. I, it knew that would, that would scare me, and it knew that I would understand the implications. Alien? Jesus Christ. Mm. It's an alien. <laughs> Potentially. The sound of an automobile working its way along the road of, of my farm one morning gave me a little rush of excitement. I'd be planning to abandon the farm since I saw the thing, but I couldn't hope to leave on foot without asking it, at, without risking it, treating me like it treated my horses. But if I could get in the car with whoever was coming my way, I might be able to escape before it could stop me. I didn't know or care who it was. I decided that the moment they stopped the car, I would jump in the passenger seat and tell them to get the hell out of here. I didn't get the chance. <laughs> Fuck. All right. Straight up. All right. <laughs> the car worked its way slowly along the road, trundling across the uneven ground. I urged it silently to hurry. It was when it passed between the two bales placed on either side of the road that I began to hear a booming clatter from the woods. The thing burst suddenly from between the trees, sprinting on all four of its terrible gangly limbs towards the car. Within a few seconds, it was there, pouncing on the automobile like a predatory cat. 
Within moments, it was picking and peeling the vehicle's steel frame apart, working to get at the driver. The man, whoever he was, screamed all the while, and I could hear him even over the crunching of metal and the shattering of glass. It was, the, it was only when the thing crushed him carelessly in its hand that the screaming stopped. It tossed him away and strained up to look at me once again. In the sunlight, I can see the inhumanity of it. It was composed entirely of something awful and alive, which was lashed together in a messy semblance of human form. Whatever it was that made it look so polished and hard, that if it weren't for the, um, the minute writhing of the stuff, what? Right, minute right, writhing right. of the stuff. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think it was made of granite. I think it was made, yeah. The thing retreated back into the woods, and I was left to my shock. My eyes wandered to where the car sat, the engine still sputtering between the two hay bales. Suddenly I understood. The message was clear. I'm this thing's captive, and I'm not allowed visitors. Nothing may come across the borders, it has said. I'm trapped here by the thing that stalks the fields, and demands nothing except that I never leave. Still, I don't know if I can handle being that thing's canary. I've been thinking hard for the last few days since I saw crush that man's chest and silence him before he could finish his scream. If I cross the hay bale border, it'll probably do the same. It'd smash my skull before I could put my hands up to protect myself. It'd go and find a new pet and probably keep looking until it found someone who could stand knowing that it was waiting just outside, watching it all hours with its shiny insect eyes. I've been thinking hard for the last few days, and I might just make a run for it. Hmm. That was the thing that stalks the fields. You said it was about a real, a real monster, but no, no we're talking about a realistic, realistic monster. In a realistic. Story. What is a real monster, Dylan? A real monster in a realistic story. A real monster so is a pedophile. Extras, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, not even that. You know what? Like a real, like a like a fictional monster. In a, a believable realistic... monster in a fictional story is. Mm, That's yes. still clearly fictional, right? I abs I absolutely love this story. This was great. This is a this was a great way to come back. Also, the ending is story. incredible. Yeah, the way that it ends, it's just it's literally like the guy left a memo on his door, and this is what he saw, and he said, "I'm just gonna make a run for it." Not not to not to be that guy, but like you towards the end, I could kind of like I kind of like I could see it's like, oh, this thing is is keeping it is keeping this dude here. Like it kind of, you can kind of see it coming. Yeah. Just a little, um, but, and that, that's really my only gripe of the story. Um, I have a couple of gripes as well, but you can go first. I, I don't know, I, I, um, I, I really like this one because of how simple and short it was. Um, I like how we don't know what this thing is. I like how we don't know why it's doing what it's doing. I think they're, they're, it's so, it's so hard to find that balance in a horror story of what to leave ambiguous and what to just spell out. Um, like, they could have, this guy, you could have kept this thing kind of in the shadows, and I think it still would have worked for the most part. Um, but then again, that might have been too much. Not knowing what it looked like, and not knowing what its motive was, and not knowing why it's doing what it's doing, might have been too much. So I think the author did strike a happy balance between literally telling us exactly what this fucking thing looked like, but then not giving us any of its motivation. Really. Why it's doing what it's doing. Right. Um, and it's hard. It's really hard to ride that line. And I mm -hmm. think this author does it very well. I really enjoy the story for what it was. Uh, which is just simple and creepy and... Yeah. Doesn't yeah. fuck around. No, it doesn't. It doesn't waste your fucking time. And it doesn't another thing that i liked about it is it it doesn't fall into the trap that we sometimes get with people going over board with the gore and the violence yeah. um i think i think the gore and violence in this is it loans itself to the simplicity of what the author's trying to do um this was almost the perfect story in my opinion mm -hmm. um i like it because one of the things about it is that this guy is clearly in a secluded area he's on a farm this is this is the part of the country where you really don't have access to the things that you would have in a suburban or urban area you can't just like and also we don't even know and i know that we get we get stuck on this a lot with time semantics but we don't know what time period this is yeah that's true 
Um, and this, I think this almost was perfect yeah, because this that. almost could have just been yeah. on a farm in a secluded land, and this is just a singular creature that's just a freak of nature right. that's, maybe it's human even, it could have been like a mutated human. It's like some kind like. of stitch together, yeah. Like but there is one, but that's the good thing about, that. this is one thing that I like about because it, it made me frustrated because I want to know what this thing is, and they don't explain what it is, they just explain how it looks, and I'm like, the hell is it? Well, that's the point. You're, I'm, I'm, well, I'm this is from this is imagination. strictly from the author's perspective. Right. You know about how what this creature is as much right. as the guy who actually saw. It's it. not omniscient, right? There's it's nothing. Not omniscient there's, it's not omniscient because what ends up happening is you know just as much as he does mm -hmm. or she does. It, whoever this the author may be. Perspective, not the author's it, No, the the fear of the unknown. I mean the characters, enough, the main is, character's it, perspective. If we're not even we're not even talking about who is speaking. We're talking about the way the story is told. It well, is not an omniscient narrator. It is a first-person narrator. Well, omniscient saying, yeah. meaning... No. You're, the difference is an omniscient narrator would know things that the character narrator would not. Oh, omniscient yeah. meaning all-knowing. Right. Okay. Right, and we know as much as the character what this thing is. And again, this is a secluded area. It seems to be in the middle of nowhere. Right. But my only gripe... And I, I swear to God, as cool as a scene as this was, is the fact that he lives next to a road. I kind of have a problem with that. A I don't bit. think he. I don't I, think he lives next a to couple a couple of. He does live next to a road. It says in the story. Mm. A couple of. He's been seeing this thing for the last couple of days, and not a single automobile has right. driven by the house, not even once. Or if it has, somehow they've gotten away unscathed. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe he only started attacking once it set up the boundaries. I don't know how it works. Maybe there's not a lot of cars that come through the area. That's fine. I, was just, uh, I just don't find it believable that so many days can go by without a single automobile. Yeah, Wait, I don't. Yeah, the the way the way it made it the way he made it sound. I'm I'm, I'm just looking back. The way the farmer made it sound, I I felt like he had reached out to somebody somehow, or like there was like a dirt path leading up to his house. But yeah, I'm, I'm looking back. Well, it's, it it's worded like, weird. It sounds like a road, but that, it is a road that's going yeah. by. And it's but, right next to his area. But I mean, I mean, it's more, it's more of a, but like, it's a rural setting. Right, even in the middle land, of nowhere, you don't, you fields, know, yeah. Right. You know, it obviously that doesn't get made, it's like in the middle of nowhere. Right. Like, Nobody no fucking, more, no right. we're not going to argue time semantics, but I imagine this ha this can take place anywhere less than the 1950s, really. There's uh, automobiles driving around. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's true. But again, it, it deals right in a rural area, even in the modern day. There are roads that don't fucking go. That's and fine. Nobody's on but for, for that's a fair, long time. But a few days without anyone going by. Potentially, yeah. yeah. And how long's the creature been there? Okay, but that's but that's the thing too, because because now on. because now theoretically, we again we don't know anything about the monster. So the monster could have been watching this motherfucker for like again. This is all implied. But if this thing has some kind of semblance of intelligence. I would make the assumption, or I would just throw my interpretation out there that this thing, and like, like the 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 narrator gives us his take on it, which is this thing is intelligent. It might be going to different places and doing this to different people, and then they when they eventually go crazy, it kills them, and it finds the next person. So if we take the narrator's interpretation or its belief, this thing could have been stalking him. Or just sit in the woods watching the road and seeing how many fucking people go by, realizing that he was in the clear. We don't know. We don't know. And that was the author's assumption that this thing is doing this to other people. Wait, I got it, lost. It takes when, people. When uh, why did why did the creature attack the car again? Because it was it, it it went through the boundary, the hay bales. bales. He set up the hay bales as a boundary. Okay. But the thing is, also what helps out this story too, because when you think about it, you're like, where's the setting? And that's the that is exactly from what he did with the monster. You right. don't know, right. and that's what makes it makes it work because you don't know where it is, which is basically the assumption of it's in the middle of nowhere. Right? Because you they don't know where, you... you can't find it. You don't know where it is. Right. Exactly. They give you the author's interpretation, yeah. and and that's where I made the leap that I just made. Uh, but we don't know. We we don't know. And the author the author gives us or the the narrator gives us just enough. But it's good because again, it's not omniscient. It's what he thinks this thing is, or what he's right. theorizing. You it play is. a risky business when you actually try to give right. us what. It but that is. being right. said, yes, this is an incredible story. Dylan, That's what great. do you think? Let's get. We have the floor to Dylan first. Really uh, 
Well, I was just like giving my opinion before, but like you know, it, without the, with the un like it was frustrating because you don't know what this thing is, you don't know what this thing is or um, where they are. You know, you don't know who the character, who the main character is, and so it leaves a lot of oh, so this person, this character is this kind of guy who does this, this, and this. The place is here where it can be like you know they do this thing, this thing, this thing here, but you don't know. And then the monster, it, even though they give a semblance of what the monster is. You don't know exactly what it is. See, I, f- I feel like we're a very different schools of thought because, and this is not necessarily a bad thing because I love it for for being ambiguous, but because you are a journalist, and because that is your background, because yeah. that's what you want to do, you want all of the yeah, fucking yeah, facts, yeah. and yeah. you're not sad, and that's fine, and yeah. I like that, and that's not a bad thing, and However, I find that interesting. However, this is what I'll say, Dylan. Remember the, remember the question I asked before we started reading, which is, how do you make a right. realistic horror story that features a fictional monster that clearly isn't real, right. but can be realistic, nevertheless? And I think one of the reasons you do it in this case is you really can't afford... I think it loses... If, do, you, do you agree that if they had gone over the setting, and if they had gone over exactly where he was, and who the guy... Maybe they go over a name... And they go over a location, and they go over exactly what this guy does. Does the story lose any credibility to you, even if you learn more facts? The only credibility it made me lose was when, like, it's weird because when I, as soon as I was told, like, you know, about the whole hay bale thing, I instantly thought of otherworldly, you know, beings kind of thing. Well, it kind of is. It could be. It could be. Like, it, it could, could be. be. Like, it could be. We in, don't in know. In such cases, you, you don't know. It's, I I don't know because there's so much missing. It's so much missing. I just it doesn't. I can't. I can't put up. But I can't what John is at, but what John is asking you is if all of that information was filled in, right? Would that would that really Satisfying. make the story any better? Would it make it better or worse? If I you feel know like if you had, if, I feel like if you had a second story, like a police report, kind of. Well, that's Maybe. a whole. Di- we'll see. Well, that's yeah, a whole but, different. But, now but, you're but, going outside. I, I, know, I know. I know. I'm going outside, outside for this a bit, but it just. I, in my opinion, I feel like it would help. Because you bit, want because you want me, more backstory, I, uh, which is what we're asking. Yeah, more backstory because you know I don't even know where. But exactly Dylan, what they again, are. I'm. You're not really. You're kind of dodging my question. He's he's answering it indirectly because yeah. we're literally. That's what yeah. we're asking you, yeah. and you keep going. Does this tangent. story, if like imagine that. That all the facts come to light in this one story. No sequels happen. Does its credibility die a little bit? Are you satisfied? No. I don't think its credibility dies at all. There you go. If you know the exact location and the occupation. If I know the exact location, I can understand why no one's coming. And that, and that helps me out understand more about oh what this thing is doing, how everything works there. It's not. It's not your your. But the it's setting. Not, the what setting you're saying is not isn't dumb, right. but I just don't know. It's, it's, it's not, a no, I'm, not saying this, I'm not saying the setting is dumb. I'm just saying if I have a little bit more That's information. Not what I said, but... If I, if I have I a little more information, I want to say your school of thought is flawed, but I don't think it is. I think it's just a different perspective. It's a different type yeah. of thinking. So let's say the farm is in Nebraska and it's 1968. So you have yeah, that. It, but that doesn't that what does that have to do with the monster and what happens in the story? The setting is because, incidental. No, he, he brought up John brought up earlier the car going like where they're next to a road right. and that's where it that's where I'm like okay now it makes sense because they're in the middle of Nebraska you have a farm and there's this one road and most of people don't, don't go don't, by They don't even farms. say that. They don't even say that. I know. You're making <laughs> assumptions. I know, but that's and, but that's what makes the story good because you're making assumptions. But at the same time, I don't. I feel like if you add, it added maybe just a little bit of I information think based about on it, it the fact that this it. is a short story, I think the author chose to focus on the monster and the what the events instead the of the character. Monster, right. yeah. We know yes. nothing about this guy, and that's guy. what's important. And we that's, know that that's this guy's a farmer. Is so we know the guy's a farmer, and he's probably a rough and gruff kind of guy or gal, mm. and who has done this by who's clearly living by themselves. Right. And that's not uncommon oh, in that in this kind of environment. How being a lonely farmer on a field with probably some livestock, probably at least well, not a, anymore. Well, <laughs> he's either <laughs> got a couple, of, probably a couple acres of land not that he grows shit on or whatever. I wouldn't say by himself if it's a couple acres. Not necessarily. Again, 
This is no. all implications. But, but that's right. the thing. Well, because the hail, know. well, he's using the hail bales that are like coming out. Well, so we're yeah. so we're assume we we can assume that no one else is there because the several well, days have passed. Well, yes, but like that, but that's the, but that's the thing with the story because I don't really know anything. I'm making assumptions, and that makes it even better because you can th- go multiple routes of what happened. So what you're saying is he's including really more, in, right? Including more yeah. information. I'm not, Doesn't no, make the no, story said, better. No, he said he asked if it would, you know, if it would, you know, make it the same. I was like, right. yeah. If you add it, it, I feel like it'd be the same story. It wouldn't make the story any better for you then. Okay, wait, hang on. So we just Before went we, full circle. Okay, okay. you two, I'm, I'm you getting, two. Getting, okay, guys, you two, assaulted. guys, guys, guys. You two stew in your thoughts and try to think of things to say. Nate, why don't you talk about the story a little bit? Um, do what you, do you think? Well, first of all, do you guys think? He, do, I don't know how writing, like everybody writes and stuff like that, but do you guys think he intentionally, the author intentionally wrote this to be short? Yes. Or do you think it just naturally? Yes, was absolutely. Intended? I think the t- intention was. And he did short. an amazing job. It it there are it is very you you can I don't I don't know I, it's hard it's hard to explain because my brain has been so. Nate, let me fucking ask you a wired. question then. Do you think this author succeeded in making a short story that's realistic horror with a real like kind of fictional monster that's like i don't know how to really explain how i would explain it like a like it's not like a monster like one the one from pen pal who's just right. like a pedophile right no it's or like even the one from the what the smiling man who even though he's crazy is just a man, it's a man. this is a monster it's an actual a full monster, monster. I, don't, I don't know if an you guys unhumanly it, yeah, a little a human, beast a beast a beast if you will yeah despite having a beast in the story is this still realistic to you? This scenario, like, could this? I guess the question is, could do you think like this story is in the realm of realism? I guess. No. You don't think so. No. Why is that? I would agree with that. Because when I hear this black, lanky thing, Frankenstein ass monster, foot tall. Mm. Uh, the thing I'm thinking of, and it's going to sound really dumb. Uh, it's from a game um, called The Boogeyman. I don't know if anybody's heard of it. Mm. You haven't looked at anybody. Just look it, look it up, and you might know what I'm talking about. Um, just like I said, black link. Yeah, that's what it pictures. Um, I think because you don't see that, and even the the fact of you know not knowing is still monstrous to some people. In my head, I know the author said it's like humanoid, but in my head, I'm imagining because it walks on all fours. At least when it runs to the car, I'm imagining more of like a creature. Yeah. Like I don't I don't see you mean in my he head. Said, I see on, he like said he was on four uh, I literally see, on four. Right. Like, I see like um, Osiris, like yeah. I said, from, from Dark Souls three. Mm-hmm. There was no description of the head, correct? Mm, which is the eyes and the just skin. The beady eyes and the skin. It's like black, it's like almost black. He describes granite. it as looking like a living piece of granite, basically. Right. And right. the fact that this got like this thing chopped off the horse's heads and destroyed this car and this guy, I don't think this is anything humans Well <clears throat> Again, we don't know. Again, the beast it's, is the fictional it's not about, part. It's not about realism. It's about it. It. it it's okay. I. I think we're using the wrong words here. I wouldn't even say it's believability. I think it's just does the horror work? Right. It doesn't have to be about realism. We've read stories that are realistic right. that are horrible. This is not realistic. This. The. The. The question. I feel like the question is wrong. I feel like. This works as the question should be: Is this scary? And the question is: Yeah. Then the answer Absolutely. is: To me, yes, it is yeah. scary yeah. because it doesn't have to be realistic, and and because of the ambiguity, mm-hmm. because we don't get really much of anything. Right. Um, you know, fucking going back to Lovecraft, right? Lovecraft, fucking the Call of Cthulhu is about a fucking. A man going on a, a, a basically, a, it's like the first creepypasta. Basically, it's about a man recalling events, a, a worldwide event a, about like a cult trying to resurrect some ancient cosmic deity, and then it ends with a giant fucking winged dragon, fish face monster chasing a boat in the ocean. Is that believable? No, but it's fucking scary. It's yeah. scary and it's creepy yeah. It, yeah. because of what it is. Um, and yes, the story exceeds it being scary because of the ambiguity. Going, going back to when, you know, if the author wrote this intentionally short, he, 
he did, as you guys said, and it was, you, you, you there, there are there are certain just stylistic choices that you that you kind of that you pick up on, like like John said. Second paragraph, the horses' heads are off. Right, like and this that's author's why not fucking around. This, like he's this a conscious was choice. Done, it, the, uh, the, the story was so short; it was still done really well, right. and the unknown factor was placed in perfectly. Right. It wasn't like just drawn. It was just you could you go for so much unknown, and you could William, be fine with it. William mentioned this in one of the podcasts, and I don't remember which one, but he said he said something along the lines of, "I feel like authors have an idea." And they put the idea down, and then they sort of hit a wall. They don't know where to go with the idea. This feels like this guy knew exactly what yeah. he wanted to do. Yeah. Before he put pen to paper or finger to keyboard, this guy... Who's the author, by the way? And uh, Dave Fielding. Is Fielding? that what it said on the bottom? What did I say? I Dave think he credited Dave something. Yeah, it's Fielding, but it's spelled like E. P-H-E. Dave Fielding. Whatever. Dave Fielding. This guy knew exactly what he wanted to do. You can tell the, 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 the authorial intent is present. It's like a slime beast story. It's well thought out. It's there's there's very specific choices made. Yes. You can tell just by reading it. And that's why the story is good. I would I'm gonna play devil's advocate a little bit and say that I think this story can be realistic, even in this environment. Um if you are to believe it's realistic and you are to cast your doubts about a monster because we do have things like the Jersey Devil and the you know the aforementioned Goat Man. Cropsy but fucking if if <laughs> we'll talk about Cropsy another time. Um but if this monster was to be real, mm. this is exactly how it would be. It would be one f- freak of mother nature. Who's right. to say that one freak of mother nature isn't out in the woods in the middle of goddamn nowhere Sasquatch. that haunts <laughs> I mean, if you want to say that. Yeah, I mean... But this is a creature that has been seen by apparently just one person. And it's a person in the middle of nowhere, on a field, moving hay bales. It could even be human on some level. That's what's the... It's the the meticulousness of it. There's enough... There's enough... I think there's there's some semblance of... And that's why I keep saying that I think this author did a good job creating a realistic horror story. Mm -hmm. Despite... Yeah, maybe this is a little bit far-fetched, but I think the way that it's written, and I think the way that... I think what really sells it for me is the way that this creature is meticulously moving the hay bales yeah. and making almost like reasoning choices. Right. It's acting human, but it's a beast. Right. And maybe in the real world, a beast wouldn't be just a monster. It would be somewhat human. Maybe this is a human being on some level. Well, the scariest yeah. monsters are human beings, John. Yeah, let's not <laughs> he rolls his yeah, fucking eyes. When I heard, when I, as, as, we, as we were reading agree, this, Okay, I just want to... I'm curious, because yes. Dan seemed to disagree with you at first, but the real... I just... I, I don't... I just don't... You don't think so? I, I, no, I, I agree with you on some level, but I just don't fine. think that is the most important and That's fine. Question. That's totally fair. But I think we're all in agreement that the story did a good job. Except I don't know why, but like, I, whenever I... I, I, I when, Maybe don't. When we were reading this, when we were reading this, I'm, you know, I like to picture in my head what's going on. Dylan, I want to know where you're... I'm, you're you're yeah, actually talking like, of... Hold on, hold on, hold on, I'm sorry. sorry. But, so, like, you know, I, right. we're reading this, and all, I don't know why, like, I it popped up... It, this pops up in my head when I read this. I think of the beginning of a sci-fi movie. Okay. Like, Dylan, you know, I want to know... Because you have... And I got that vibe too when we started too because it's moving shit in fields. Like you're thinking of crop circles. No, 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 not not even crop. No, not crop circles. Not like a sci. Not genre sci-fi. Like you know, on the sci-fi channel. Sci-fi oh, that movie. garbage. <laughs> okay. And I, I don't mean to well, be. Well, now I you're mean, wrong. I don't mean to be, I don't mean to be negative. About <laughs> Dylan, it. Like, I want to just. just I, I want to yeah. have a general. Just if you would let me, I just want to have a general feel from where you're coming from. Would you say overall that you liked or disliked the story? Do you think it's a good story or a bad story? It's. That's the thing. I'm in between on that because I like the story. Pick a side. But because of the lack of like, I like you like details. I like story. details. Yeah. Like Dylan's in a lot of pain right now. He can't really focus. He has a lot of pain. He has his arms covered in eyes. tattoo bandages. <laughs> we didn't even like. You know what we did? We didn't even talk about the tattoos you got. You did, honestly. yeah. Did well, we whatever. like talk about no. what you got? That'll be the after. <laughs> sure, fine. <laughs> Um, <laughs> geez, before, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, you know what it is. I be- at the beginning, I was like, you know, I liked it because of the uh, how you know it was ominous. You know, you don't know what's going on. But then, as I'm like, as we're discussing it, I'm getting annoyed because I, 
want to know. Like, I feel like if I knew more, I don't know. Like, at one point, I'm like, yes, I like the, uh, you know, you don't know what's going on. At the same time, though, like, because I guess that's the journalism side of me, wants to know what the fuck is going on. So I'm, like, caught in between with it, because half of me, like, I can deal without knowing, and the other half's like, I gotta know. So as so as a journalist, say you get wind of a story about some kind of creature out in the West that murdered a man in his farm. I'm going to find that story, find mm-hmm. out what the hell You're happened. You're a fucking lunatic. <laughs> So the story clearly was ineffective because I would be scared shit to Dylan because I would be scared shitless. Right. I'm trying to think of like, like how does this like different from why would you like string theory so much then? Your string theory is sort of a bunch of gremlins with little right, string right. ties, because, and that's not really a setting either. It's just because a it's because you it's either your control you you don't know if we're being controlled right now we don't, just don't see it. Oh, the idea of like being, being controlled by right. something and not okay. seeing that we're being controlled. Like right now, there's some there's sure. some heady there's some heady stuff in there. Yeah. That's why okay. this is a very basic monster that's story. Okay, yeah. okay. Like that's why I'm like caught in between on this because one part of me is like, okay, leave it alone. The other part is like, I need to know what the hell happened. I need to know. <laughs> I need well, to email know. David whatever and ask him. We got the scoop. <laughs> Fantastic. They left, they left the mess. We got the scoop. Yeah. Exactly. All right, yeah. Um, let's just do final thoughts then. Um, I think this story is brilliant. I think this is an easy nine out of ten for me. Uh, I I think this again, much like I haven't seen a story like this since Mister Widemouth, where the story ends on the like it does. It's not too long. It's not Wide too Mouth, short. Well, Widemouth was significantly longer than this. Oh, I know, but Widemouth had a little bit more that it was trying to do. Yeah, yeah. But I think both. Either way, I think this point is the same. That both stories have authors who, like you said, and like I suppose William said, clearly have a direction right. from the uh, from the outset. Right. What they're gonna do, they have they have the blueprint printed out. They got the facts. They're they got... Zach, they're not Zack Snydering it. Right. Yes. They are not Shots trying fired. To, they are not trying to shove five horror stories into one Hashtag release the Snyder cut. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Um but no, I think the story is incredible. It's one yeah. of the best stories on Creepy Pass that wiki. So read it. I would like to change my uh my top three. This is number one now. Uh <laughs> I no, I, I, yeah, I mean, I would, I would even maybe give this a ten out of ten. I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with this story at all, and I think. I feel like with what was his shit on you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 fucking what? What else is new? <laughs> so, we'll um, so I think I think here's, this is, the, and I think this is the thing. Um, if we did get more information, I feel like then we'd be able to sit there and pull holes in the story. Yeah. Right? You're able to it's pull like, well, it take, apart. Right. It takes place in 2010. Why don't you just use the cell phone? Why don't you just well, take pictures of it? Right? And then you well, get I, plot I, I holes. Wasn't say, I wasn't saying, like, well, I wasn't saying about time. Like, you don't have to mention time. No, but what I'm We're saying, saying is... Though, there are explanations. Oh, yeah. Oh, this, yeah. Right. Well, yeah. There, there, there... This story is is amb- is extremely ambiguous in all the right ways. Yes. And that's why I think this is a perfect story. Because, again, there is very, very specific choices. And my only slight minor no, flaw was the goddamn car. Right. But, I mean... There are very, that, very s- meticulous choices on what the author chooses to include and does not. But either the ones, I, even the parts I don't like, like, for just the one tiny part I don't like... Right. I can still say that the author had right. Idea. It's enough for me to knock a point off an, an almost perfect score. <laughs> it's, I'm not, it's an arbitrary bullshit thing. Anyway. You don't have to give it a score, Dylan, if you don't want. But you, you know. I, I, I would like to, but Wait, I'm, are we not I'm doing the thumb between, thing anymore? <laughs> I'm stuck. In, I'm stuck in between. You know, here and here. So five. You're not sure. So five. I'm not sure. <laughs> so you're undecided. I'm, Which I is fine. Undecided. That means that, you know what, that means that the author put you in a spot I'm, I'm where still, it makes I'm you still think. think. I'm still, like, thinking about it. I'm trying to, like... And you know what? That's good. That means the like, author did his job in a way. You know what? Yeah. That's, in a it's way... Like, you go... the car, too, I'm like... But you say when you... You don't like the car part, but... No one's going to go home tonight and still think about right. this story. We're going to... And I'm going to be interested because next time we do a Scary Friends up, oh, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about the story. And you can maybe think about your thoughts a little bit. You know how you were getting upset with me interrupting you? So you did the same thing. Oh, God. Anyway, we, you were talking about the car, but you know, in all honesty, it brought more of it. You know, the monster being kind of scary, real because it caught up to a car. 
Mm. It caught the car. That's fair. Mm. So it's like, oh, there's a car there, but then it's showing that you can't run, a car can't run this thing. I'm gonna be sit. We're gonna be sitting in the movie theater tomorrow, and I'm gonna be trying to watch the movie. And Dylan's gonna be like, "Yeah, but see, I don't." And we're like, "Shut the fuck up, <laughs> Capstan!" <laughs> all right. Um, is that all? You don't all... know that. I don't know. know. Yeah. I'm just okay, I was trying not to date the joke. video. It's I was trying to be ambiguous, like the it's author. A joke, and whatever. I'm it's a joke. <sighs> Dylan, are you done or not? Um, Nate. Um, I would give it a ten out of ten. Uh, Why? It, because. Uh, again, going back, it just, it, uh, I think the author knew it would be sort of a risk to know what is going on, and he'd have to go and, you know, there's, you gotta give a, you gotta be different with the details, and that's not easy to do nowadays, and you gotta, you know, gotta really bring in an audience and wow people with the details, and I think he knew, you know, doing the unknown the right way would have brought everybody in, and it did. Yeah, I think. Very solid. Very solid points. All right. I'm glad to be back. And I hope the next episode goes well. In the next episode, we're going to read over the comments from this very video. And we're going to be talking about this story a little bit before we read the next one. I promise we're going to start. <laughs> we started this story at 26 minutes. And we've been discussing it for, I think, about a half hour. Cool. So this is... And that's another that's another thumbs up to the story. The fact that we were able to discuss it for 30 minutes. And it's so short. Yeah. So a lot to digest. But this has been my friends Dan, Dylan, and Nate. I've been John, a.k.a. Skillfully. Have a good night. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. And now a reading of Dagon. Shut <laughs> up. <laughs>